Hello, and thank you for joining us for today's session, A Parent's Guide to Universal Design for Learning, otherwise known as UDL. Our learning opportunities for today are, first we'll begin with the foundations of universal design for learning and its benefits. Then we'll explore what it looks like in practice and discuss what UDL may look like at home. Additionally, we'll provide resources for families to explore on their own. Now let's begin with an inclusion activity. For this activity, we would like for you to think about your child's hidden talents. What special talents does your child have? For example, can your child dance a full routine or maybe play a sport like a professional athlete? How about can they do mental math? Well, all of those hidden talents are part of what makes your child unique. And as a unique individual, your child also has a unique way of learning too. Now let's look at the concept of intersectionality. Intersectionality describes the way in which systems of inequality based on gender, race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, disability, class, and other forms of discrimination intersect to create unique dynamics and effects. Because of individuals' uniqueness, our students cannot be summed up in one word. They are all not just the gifted student or the student with an IEP or the English language learner. Students have many identities that carry many abilities, capacities, and skills. This is what makes it important to make sure that their uniqueness shines. And also equally important that we do not define a student by a singular identity as this can impact and limit students' experiences and outcomes. So in order to validate each student's individuality and gifts, a framework that's not a one size fits all approach is needed as this will support each student's unique way of learning. Now let's dive into the foundations of UDL. Take a minute and look at both of the images presented here. What do you notice? What is similar between the two? These images demonstrate how education was built during the industrial age by people who managed factories because the educational system of the 19th century was preparing students for labor jobs essentially equipping them with skills such as following directions, remembering facts, working alone, and showing respect. And for most of us, picture on the left may not look too different from how we were educated in schools. But let's take a second to think about the individuals who were educated in a model like this but did not learn well in this type of system. Think about all of their lost potential. As years have progressed, many things have changed in education. California Education Code states, each child is a unique person with unique needs. And the purpose of the education system of this state is to enable each child to develop all of their own potential. A few moments ago, we asked you to explore your child's hidden talents. Those hidden talents are part of what makes your child unique. So one way to support students in reaching their potential is to have an approach that validates their uniqueness. 
Now in the 21st century, it's about the teachers letting go of knowledge control and facilitating a learning environment of competency. It's about students showing a variety of ways of problem solving, being creative, critical, self-evaluating, collaborating with others, showing initiative and persevering. Additionally, in today's time, there is a great importance for our students to become digital citizens, learn to determine the reliability of information and connect globally. These are valuable 21st century skills. Now this quote by Alec Ross states, how our teachers and schools should be preparing our students for jobs that have not yet been invented. Let's now dive into exactly what is UDL. Well, UDL is a framework for guiding educational practice. It helps with establishing flexibility to access, it provides choices, and it embraces individuality. It looks at providing flexibility in ways students are engaged, ways information is presented, and ways students respond. UDL breaks down any barriers in instruction for all students throughout the learning process by providing accommodations, supports, and rigor, while also maintaining high achievement expectations. UDL celebrates variability of learners by addressing intersectionality. Let's explain the basic concept of UDL with a night out at a restaurant. Let's say it's a Friday night and you would want to go out for dinner with your family. When you walk into the restaurant, you are greeted and then taken to sit at a booth. If you are a family of four and prefer a booth, then that's great. You can sit and relax and have dinner. But what happens if your family has a mixture of needs and a booth just won't work? Maybe you need a place for a wheelchair and maybe you need a place for a high chair. Maybe you have a family member with you who is pregnant and sitting at a booth is just not going to work. If we take a moment to look at the images on this slide, you will notice that in these pictures, there are a variety of choices. These choices allow for someone to sit at a booth or at a table. In fact, the picture in the lower right corner offers a table where everyone can sit together regardless if you need a booth or a table. Having options is beneficial so that everyone can sit and eat regardless of individual needs. Every person is different and unique and should have the choice to select an option that works best for them. UDL makes it possible to include everyone and these pictures are also a good reminder that access and equity are critical in non-academic areas as well. Additionally, we wanted to share some background information as to what inspired the idea of providing universal supports. UDL was actually inspired by architecture and the movement to design buildings that would ensure everyone had access and choices. The concept of providing universal access and choices was then transferred into education. UDL is not a special ed thing or even a general ed thing. It's just an ed thing. This is a quote from Mike Murata that reminds us that sometimes people have a misperception that UDL is only for students with disabilities. 
But in fact, UDL strategies are intended to be used with and for all learners. It benefits everyone. The UDL framework is organized into three main sections that are named principles. These three principles of UDL are based on different areas of the brain that we use for learning. The first area we see here to the left is the affective networks of the brain. This is the why of learning. It's the engagement, the part of the brain that needs to be stimulated with interest and motivation for learning. Next, we see the recognition networks of the brain. These are the what of learning. This involves representation. Here is where the brain helps students understand information and content by how it is presented or represented in different ways. Finally, there's the strategic networks of the brain. These are the how of learning. And the action of expression is the major part of this section. This part of the brain helps students express what they know. Additionally, each UDL principle contains three guidelines for a total of nine UDL guidelines. UDL guidelines are a tool used in the implementation of universal design for learning. These guidelines offer a set of concrete suggestions that can be applied to any discipline or domain to ensure that all learners can access and participate in meaningful, challenging learning opportunities. The principle of engagement includes guidelines for recruiting interest, sustaining effort and persistence, and for self-regulation. The goal of this principle is to create purposeful and motivated learners. For representation, this includes guidelines for perception, language and symbols, and comprehension. This principle and its guidelines aims at creating learners that are resourceful and knowledgeable. Lastly, the principle of action and expression provides guidelines for physical action, expression and communication, and for executive functions. And the goal here is to guide students into becoming strategic and goal-oriented learners. Next, we will discuss the benefits of UDL. Take a moment to consider if you were to select the three most important things for your child to learn or gain in school, which would you choose? Here is a list of the benefits of UDL. Please take a moment to select from this list the three things that are the most important for your child to learn or gain in school. Jot them down or simply think about them. Please pause your video to read the list and make your selections. Then resume the video when you are finished. Welcome back. Now, if we were to compare the list you just created with that of another parent, the two would most likely differ. All families want important benefits for their child. However, at the same time, we all have different ideas of what the most important benefits are because all of our children are very unique. This is where universal design for learning comes in. Everyone wants and needs different things and UDL provides the flexibility and removes the barriers so everyone has 
a better chance at getting what they want and need. Today's educators serve diverse learners with a variety of abilities and our classrooms include students from all backgrounds. For this reason, educators learn to plan for variability by designing lessons that offer students flexibility and choices while keeping their expectations high. UDL honors variability by reducing stigma and eliminating barriers. Students are unique and they have different strengths and areas of need. Regardless of whether a student has an IEP or not, UDL reduces the stigma associated with using accommodations and eliminates barriers by offering all students a choice in how they receive information in the lesson. For example, there are occasions when the same information can be learned by either reading a text, listening to a podcast, viewing a presentation, are by interacting with technology. Likewise, choices can also apply when students need to demonstrate their knowledge. For example, students can either write, speak, or even animate their answers as appropriate. By exposing students to a wide variety of methods for learning, UDL empowers students to take ownership of their education. It builds confidence in their strengths and prepares them for success in the future. As previously mentioned, the traditional one size fits all method of teaching leaves little room for diverse learners to flourish in our classrooms. Variability is bound to exist in all settings. The image on this slide depicts how different ideas are constantly being generated in any group of people at any moment. The primary benefit of UDL is that it makes it easier for each individual to engage in lessons and to demonstrate their learning in ways that highlight their strengths. It's unrealistic to expect all students to memorize facts and produce work on demand in a uniform way. We're humans, not robots after all. So another benefit of UDL is that it helps students prepare for careers and personal success. Employers today seek individuals who show initiative, effective communication, teamwork, problem solving, critical thinking, creativity, open-mindedness, adaptability, and empathy. Again, UDL exposes young people to a wide variety of learning methods, which helps them become more flexible learners and develop the essential skills they'll need for workplace success. Now that we've discussed Universal Design for Learning Framework and its many benefits, let's pause for a moment to check for understanding with a quick activity. On the screen, I'll present four questions and you'll determine if they're true or false. We'll review the answers at the end. Question number one. UDL provides flexibility in ways information is presented and the way students show their learning. Number two, true or false. UDL supports students' development of communication and teamwork skills. Number three, UDL promotes creativity. And finally, question number four, UDL provides appropriate accommodations, supports challenges, and maintains high achievement expectations for all students. Let's check our answers. Number one, true. Number two, true. Number three, true. Number four, true. Universal design for learning is truly a beneficial approach 
for our unique learners. Now that we've heard what UDL is and what the benefits are that come from it, let's take a look at examples of what UDL looks like in practice in the classroom. Like we read from the quote from Mike Murata earlier, UDL is not specific to special education. UDL supports all learners, regardless if they receive special education services, are considered gifted, or if they're your typical student. By providing options to all students, teachers are allowing every student to get what they need to be successful academically. This may be different than what you're used to seeing in the classroom. We often see accommodations for individual students. For example, two or three students may be allowed to, see, to use a multiplication chart, while others are not when solving math problems. However, UDL allows all students the choice to use the multiplication chart. Those who do not need it won't, while those who do will. What's important here is that students decide, not the teacher. Students learn to take responsibility for their own learning and determine what they need to be successful. When a teacher incorporates UDL into their lessons, there are certain things that should stand out to you as a parent. First, a specific goal is clearly stated and the students knows what it is. You should be able to ask your child what they are working on, and they should be able to tell you not only what, but why they're working on that assignment. Second, the teacher will include different ways to keep your child interested and motivated in the lesson. If you were watching the lesson along with your child, you would see the information in the lesson presented in more than one way. You might see some of the information written or included in audio, or even asking your child to use a hands-on method. Also, one of the big things you'll see when UDL is incorporated into a lesson is that your child will be given options. They will have a choice in choosing how they want to share what they have learned. This information might include oral presentations, group projects, written assignments, etc. In a traditional classroom, a whole class goal is usually determined by the teacher and written on the board. The teacher makes choices on how they want students to accomplish this class goal. There is one goal and one way to get there. The aim is usually to finish an end product and get a grade on the assignment. However, in a classroom that implements UDL, goal setting looks a little different. There are classroom goals. However, the teacher supports students' learning by including their individualized needs and goals. They can be written on the board, copied into student notebooks, are placed into checklists that guide students while working. Using planning templates for breaking long-term goals into short-term objectives also provides structure and pathways to achieving goals. UDL's ultimate goal is for students to understand how they learn best and what they need to succeed. In a traditional classroom, teachers may use group, rewards, incentives, assignments worked, assignments based on ability, or even highlight the importance of grades as a means to motivate students. But sometimes this isn't enough. By using universal design for learning, your child's teacher creates various ways to motivate and encourage all students. When UDL is being used, you will notice your child has more freedom to make individual choices. Giving students the choice to work in groups or in pairs or even by themselves may be an option that they are given 
to help students excited about the assignment. Your child may even choose when and what types of rewards they receive instead of a whole class reward or a chart on the wall. They might even get a choice in the order in which they complete tasks. With UDL, the teacher will often vary the pace and length of work sessions or in how many items are presented at a time. You may notice that your child's teacher puts more emphasis on the process of work completion than actually focusing on the overall grade of an assignment. Giving options and the student's ability to make decisions boost motivation. In a traditional classroom, students are taught the same lesson using one way of teaching. The focus is on what is taught. All students might be assigned to read a chapter in a textbook to learn the information. They might be expected to listen to the teacher's lecture on a particular topic and take notes. Sometimes the teacher will even show a video to the whole class that covers the specific content. However, when your child's classroom teacher incorporates UDL, teaches, teaching focuses on both the what and the how of learning. The focus shifts to providing options for your student to access learning. Because there is no such thing as a typical student, every child gets to make their own choice and take responsibility on how to accomplish the learning goals your child will start to understand how they learn best and become an expert learner, a learner who understands that learning continues their entire lives. The chapter from textbooks may be available in paper or digital form, so the student can choose to listen to the chapter instead of reading it. They may be able to even enlarge or change the color of the text if they need. The option to read and discuss with the partner is almost always there. If note taking is needed, your child may be given the option of choosing a graphic organizer or outline that is already partially filled out to help them along. The option to go back and listen to a recorded version of the lecture or be given access to the teacher's notes may be offered. This is the beauty of UDL. Your child gets to pick what they need in order to learn the content successfully. Closed captioning is turned on for those students who need to see the words written out on the screen. Videos may be accessed and watched independently in chunks with breaks or rewatched as the student needs. In a traditional classroom, Teachers often want an assignment to be completed in one way, only one correct way. Your child may be expected to write a five paragraph essay or complete a workbook page. They may be expected to answer questions about something they read. All students in the classroom are assigned the same end product. However, what happens if your child has difficulty even writing one paragraph. It may feel like pulling teeth to get them to complete a workbook page. So your child might not complete the assignment, what is needed to get a passing grade. However, UDL allows your child to choose how they wanna show what they know. For example, they could still choose to write a five paragraph essay, but they may also be given the option to write a poem, an article, or a short story. They may be asked to give an oral presentation to the class with the choice between giving a speech, explaining a drawing they created, or performing a skit or dance. Your child might be able to record a short movie or instructional video. They may be given the opportunity to perform a puppet show, write a song, a rap, create a display board, or even draw a comic strip to, know, to show what they've learned. The possibilities are really endless, and your child will be excited that they get to be creative, 
and show off their skills to their teachers and peers. Every student is able to show what they know in different ways. So let's review the main points of what we have learned about UDL in the classroom. UDL is about making sure the students are engaged and interested in what they're doing. Information is given to students in multiple ways, and students can show what they know in different ways. In this section, we'll look at how you can support your child at home using UDL. We will look at some families and how they use UDL in their home. Three ways to use UDL at home. Try new ways to ensure your kids get understood when you're talking to them. Even when we think we are clear and our instructions are easy, UDL means stopping to reflect on whether our kids understand what you tell them. Something like instructions or plans for the weekend. It means presenting information in multiple ways, such as using pictures, something written, or repeating words. Don't automatically assume they know what you're talking about. With older kids, emojis might seem to be a big hit for communication. At least it is nowadays. The same goes for when kids are communicating with you. Offer for them to communicate in a way they prefer. Some kids may like to write notes or draw pictures, make cards, sing a song. You could also incorporate UDL at home to help with executive functioning issues. This is when kids may have difficulty remembering things, starting or completing a task, or organizing their areas. Schedules and visual checklists can be used to help kids with these difficulties. These are just some examples of how a parent, like most of you, may be incorporating UDL into their home. UDL is a framework for thinking about how kids learn. So there are infinite possibilities. Three more ways to use UDL at home may include daily tasks. One thing we can do is to give children control, our choice, over as much as possible. Giving children choices develops ownership, builds confidence, and helps them solve problems. Giving children choices maximizes learning because children are more likely to actively commit and engage in an activity if they've chosen it themselves. One of the best ways to start is to give a child two choices that the parent or the caregiver approves of, and then let the child choose between the two. Next, make little moments and routines educational. In the middle photo, you'll see this dad has started cooking breakfast with his daughter. He and his daughter measure coffee grounds for the coffee maker. His daughter stirs the eggs, he warms up the pan. Pouring, measuring, counting, following a recipe, these simple tasks are learning moments that improves the child's vocabulary, promotes literacy, because the dad is reading labels and directions, and the daughter is learning steps to process events, like in a story. Together, they're also building a sense of collective effort and teamwork. Small everyday moments make learning fun and relevant to our lives. What better way to learn counting than by adding blueberries and chocolate chips one by one pancakes as they start to bubble on the top? Mmm, yummy. Lastly, chores are good for kids. It gives them a sense of accomplishment. They can be proud that they are able to do things and complete different tasks. This builds their confidence and self-esteem. Also, chores offer parents a positive and useful way to foster collaboration and family unity. Here are a list of chores by age. 
please take your time and think about what you do in your household with your child. And think about how you might make changes to include the UDL approach. For this activity, think of a chore your child does at home or that you want your child to do at home. This is like setting the goal in UDL. UDL then calls for encouragement of your child. Think about how you will engage your child on this chore. UDL calls for how you will motivate them to do this. Thinking about representation of the information. UDL asks you, how will you present directions and instructions in a variety of ways? Will you first model or provide a picture of how to do something? And then finally, incorporating expression. UDL asks, how can your child express or show you they've completed the chore? And how will they complete the chore? Is there a time frame? What are the parameters? Additionally, how much of this do you expect your child to need help with or how much you expect them to do by themselves? Take a few moments to think about that chore and how you will use UDL to have your child complete that chore. Feel free to pause the video. Welcome back. I'm sure the chores are fun, exciting, and a wonderful way to incorporate UDL in the household. We've come to the end of our presentation. Now we'll share some resources with you. Here is a list of resources that may encourage and inform parents on the Universal Design for Learning. Not only how to incorporate UDL at home, but how you may use this as a conversation piece with your child's teacher. And additionally, how you may honor and support the variability and individuality of your child and how they learn. Thank you so much for joining us in this presentation on the Universal Design for Learning. We hope that this information was beneficial and builds your capacity as a parent to better serve and support your child in their learning and pathway to success.